So we are going to find all real solutions to the equation square root of 5 minus x equals 5 minus x squared. This is a bit of a response to Black Pen Red Pen's video on this equation. If you haven't seen that, there's a link in the description. Of course, the solution that uses the quadratic equation in 5 is definitely the coolest, but I'm going to go through another method here so we can see some more ways that we can solve these kinds of problems. Now the first thing that I notice when I look at this equation is that it seems like the left and the right side, the two functions that we see, are very related. And in fact, because we see a square root on the left and x squared on the right, I'm going to guess that the right side is the inverse of the left side. So let's see if we can verify that that's true. In order to do that, we'll have the equation y is equal to the square root of 5 minus x, that's the function on the left. And we're going to solve for x in terms of y, see what that function is. First, we square both sides, so y squared equals 5 minus x. And then if we solve for x, we get that x is equal to 5 minus y squared, which is exactly what we have on the right, which means these two functions are inverses of each other. So that means that this first equation here is of the form f of x equals f inverse of x. And if you've seen the video on this channel about the coffin problem, you might see where this is going. Let's suppose we had some number x1, some specific value, where if we plug that value into the function, we get the same number out. So f of x1 equals x1. What we can also do is take the inverse of f on both sides. If we do that, on the left side, f inverse of f is just going to give us the input back. So we have x1, and on the right side, we have f inverse of x1. So notice x1 is equal to both f of x1 and f inverse of x1, which means by the transitive property, we have that f of x1 equals f inverse of x1. So if we can find a number with this equation being satisfied, then we immediately know that must be a solution to our equation here. In order to do that for this specific equation, we'll pick one of the sides, because we can see it doesn't matter which one we choose, and it'll probably be easier if we go with 5 minus x squared to start. So we need to find some number such that x equals 5 minus x squared. And if we move everything to the left side here, we get the equation x squared plus x minus 5 equals 0. So this will give us a solution to our original equation here. But before we start solving this, let's take a step back. Because remember, I did say that the solutions to this equation would give us a solution to our original equation. But I didn't say that it would give us all of the solutions. What that means is, even if this gives us some of the solutions, it's possible that there are other solutions to our original equation that we won't get just by solving this one. So instead of solving this equation right away, we're going to go back to our original equation, but keep this function over here in mind as a possible tool. So let's think about how we can deal with this original equation. We know it's going to be difficult to find solutions if we still have the square root on the left over here. So let's start by squaring both sides. If we do that, we'll get that 5 minus x is equal to, if we take the square of this expression over here, we're going to get 25 minus 10x squared plus x to the fourth. That's just distributing everything out. From here, if we move everything to one side of the equation, we're going to get x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus x plus 20 is equal to 0. Now this is a quartic polynomial. The highest exponent here is x to the fourth, which means it's going to be pretty difficult to solve on its own. But remember that we have the tool from earlier. x squared plus x plus 5 is equal to 0. So we know that the solutions to this equation over here are related to the solutions to our original equation. And because of that, I'm going to make a guess. I'm going to guess that this polynomial over here, x squared plus x minus 5, is a factor of this larger polynomial over here. And the reason is we know that the solutions, that the roots of this polynomial are related to the roots of this polynomial over here. And if these two have the same roots, that means we should be able to factor this out of the bigger polynomial. And we can actually test whether that's possible by using polynomial long division.
So here we have the polynomial long division of this bigger quartic polynomial divided by the quadratic polynomial over here. If we do this long division and we get a remainder of 0, then that means we can factor this quadratic out of the larger polynomial to simplify our problem. So let's see what happens if we do that. First, we want to get x squared to go into x to the fourth. In order to do that, we need to multiply by x squared here. So we're going to subtract x squared times this whole expression. So that's going to be x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 5x squared. Now that means that we're going to have a factor of x squared coming out from this first polynomial. If we do that, x to the fourth minus x to the fourth is going to cancel. We're going to get a minus x cubed. And then also, negative 10x squared minus negative 5x squared. That's going to be minus 5x squared plus x plus 20. From here, we need to do minus x cubed. So that means we're going to need to subtract x times this polynomial here. So we're going to have a minus x coming out. And if we do that for the rest of the expression here, minus x times x is minus x squared. Minus x times negative 5 is going to be positive 5x. So this first column is going to cancel out. We have negative 5 minus a negative 1. That's going to be a negative 4x squared right here. And then x minus 5x is minus 4x, and then plus 20. Now we need to ask, how do we get x squared to go into negative 4x squared? And to do that, we need to multiply by negative 4. So our next multiple is going to be minus 4. And that means we're going to subtract negative 4x squared, and then minus 4x, and then negative 5 times negative 4 is plus 20. And we see that we're taking the expression and subtracting the exact same thing, which means at the end here, we're going to get a remainder of 0. And that means that our quadratic goes evenly into this original polynomial. And we can factor it as x squared plus x minus 5 times what we have on the top here, the quotient, which is x squared minus x minus 4. So from this polynomial long division and the fact that we got a remainder of 0 at the end, we know that we can factor our original polynomial over here into the product of these two quadratic expressions. Which means that if we want to find where this polynomial equals 0, all we have to do is set this equal to 0 and find the roots of each of these equations. Of course, now that these are quadratics, we can easily apply the quadratic formula to get our answer straight away. And if we do that, for the left expression, we're going to get the roots of x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 21 over 2. And then for the right quadratic, we get x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 2. And so these are all the possible solutions to our original equation. So we have four solutions to this quartic equation here. But remember that we got to this equation by starting with our original and then squaring both sides. And when we square both sides of the equation, that has the potential to introduce extraneous solutions, meaning solutions to this later equation that are not solutions to the original equation. So we need to check each of these solutions to make sure that they actually solve the original equation as well. In order to do that, we can take a look at the left side and realize that because it's a square root, it's never going to be negative. So if the left side is never negative, we know that for a solution, the right side can't be negative either. Which means that if we take any of these numbers, plug them into 5 minus x squared, and the result is negative, we know it's not a real solution because the left side is never going to be negative. So if we take each of the solutions to the quartic equation, plug them into 5 minus x squared, and remove any where we get a negative coming out, then the remaining solutions are x equals negative 1 plus the square root of 21 over 2, and x equals 1 minus the square root of 17 over 2. So these are the two only real solutions to this equation over here. The way that we got here was first by realizing that this equation was of the form f of x equals f inverse of x, which means that if we could solve f of x equals x, which is easier to deal with, that would give us some solutions. 
From there, we used those solutions to go back to our original equation and find out that we could factor those out of this gigantic quartic polynomial. That gave us two quadratics, which we were then able to apply the quadratic formula. Now when we did the step of polynomial long division, I said that we could guess that this quadratic expression here was a factor of our bigger quartic polynomial. But we're actually able to show that that has to be true as well. So if you're interested in the explanation for why this quadratic ends up being a factor of that quartic polynomial, you can check the video in the description where I explain how that works as well.